What's up, guys? We are off to another start. Uh, we are kicking off 2023 with some amazing lineup of women. Today, we have Mariela Reyes. She is a territory account manager at Boxer 6. Welcome. Welcome. Happy Saturday. Um, how did you kick off your new year? Anything spectacular? Did you do anything? Were you in town? Did you party up? Anything or just chill out? I went to a rave. Um <laughs> underground rave i know i i just went all out yeah. you know <laughs> um i i love new year's it's a time where i can just dress up i love dressing up and just having fun with friends and bringing in the new gear excite like with excitement so yeah definitely went out um and just i'm happy that i'm here and and, and still that new year uh excitement is continuing with you know your show being here and and I'm just excited. Well, you look vibrant. And so I can tell you're off to a great start. You're glowing. Do you specifically have a morning routine to get you going? I know me, I do enjoy myself some cannabis, um, maybe some coffee. I am mom. So that keeps me going. How about you? Yes, definitely. I'm also a morning cannabis consumer. I love starting my my day uh, just reflecting and smoking a little bit with some coffee, doing some, you know, planning for the day. So that's like almost an everyday thing for me, unless I'm, you know, have to be on the run that day. But yeah. Yeah, I started think it's off, important. We have intentions. Yes. Yeah, I think cannabis helps me. Um, I do a lot of morning prayer, a quick morning prayer, um, just to say my gratitude for the day. I think every day that we wake up is a, a blessing. And then just to, you know, keep me in, in the right state of mind, um, being a mom and working um, to keep things afloat as far as what you expect for your date goals. I think it's super important that you take that time in the morning to set your time right. And I think um, cannabis helps me focus on that instead of my mind running around like 12 million miles an hour. I know some people prefer not consuming any cannabis till nighttime. And I think every, that's the I think that is what's different about cannabis. If it, it just fits for everybody in a different way, if it is your thing, as far as edibles, as far as flour. Now for me, I do consume, or I do prefer to consume flour. Do you have a preference on what you consume? I like to consume flour and I love blunts. Okay. That's like my to go thing. If, and then if I don't have a blunt, then, um, it's probably my bomb. I was looking for one today. I was like, I need a blunt for my, my podcast. Yeah. Like, Damn, I don't have no rest. I'm so sad. I, I broke my bong as I was like setting up for my, for I'm today. Sorry. And I'm like, no. Why? Oh, no. no. Well, 2023 is calling for new <laughs> one. Then I always say things that, you know, it's it's funny when those things happen, it's like, oh my God, it's so like heart shattering. And it's like, it's, it's just a piece, but it's a piece that has like, I name mine if, since I've, you know, I've collected, I probably have over a dozen. Um, oh. And that goes from, you know, bud vases to a stunning glass to now I'm, I'm um, enjoying my ice spire. So uh, I think I've just evolved with the, yeah. the, you know, the cannabis industry. Um, I never thought I'd be dabbing, but I always, I always joke um, after baby two dabbing was very relevant for me. <laughs> it's just very discreet and it's very quick. Um, and it just lasts longer because, you know, for me, I know I've been consuming cannabis since I was 16, obviously recreationally um, as you, as I've got, in older, I'm almost 40 now. It's as I reflect on it, I think it's kept me more on a positive end of, of things. I don't have the brightest uh, life as far as growing up, um, but I think it's never put me in a victim mentality. And so I'm thankful for that as far as using cannabis. How long has cannabis part of, has been part of your life? We have really similar stories. You know, I also started using cannabis about the age of 16. I I remember my first experience, it was so much fun. Um, and I felt the most relaxed that I ever have felt before. I, I my anxiety, yeah. um, everything just kind of left. And um, I, I continue using it recreationally. But I think until I was like 25, it's when I really started appreciating the plant for its medicinal purposes. And um and and now I, I use it as a medicine. Like it's it's something that is part of my daily life. I smoke, you know, in the morning, in the afternoon, and then I mean, at night. Yeah, it's like it's and 
and I, it's something that I can't really, I mean, I, I just think that it just, it's a benefit for me. So I wouldn't want to stop doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, I started at 16, um, probably started doing, doing it, uh, really medicinally at 23, 25. And then as I've been in the industry for the past two, almost three years now, I've gotten the opportunity to, you know, hear firsthand testimonials from consumers who tell me like, you know, cannabis is helping the quality of my life every day. You know, I, I, I'm, I might be going through cancer, you know, treatments and they, they just need something to get them by every day and with a, and give them a positive note, you know, like to feel good for, even if it's just for a couple of hours. Um, and then I had people who use it for arthritis pain, anti-inflammatory pain. So I'm just really, you know, happy that I am in an industry that I can, I feel like I'm giving back, you know, that I can, it's, it's affecting somebody's life in a positive note. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just really happy about that. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. You touched on a lot. I think anxiety is a big deal today. Um, I just had an argument, or well, not an argument, but I had a debate as usual. It's always usually a debate for cannabis for people who aren't aware of their medicinal purposes and see it purely as still a drug. Um, I feel that it comes primarily from a cultural lack of education. There isn't a lot of, um, you know, my mom comes from El Salvador. And so I've always talked about her being my biggest challenge. Um, she still side eyes it. She doesn't, you know, I can say that I'm going to a women's networking event for cannabis and she will not respect it in the same manner as my sister saying she's going out to brunch to hang out with a bunch of girls to, you know, vibe mm -hmm. for sisterhood. It just is a different um, energy that I'm given back when I'm talking about what I do in my life and how I, um, what, who I surround myself with. And so for me, I think the moment that my mom finally sees it medicinally, then I think that the impact has finally reached that level. But until then, I think she's my biggest like student that I want to finally, once she understands it, I think it'd be um, really important and a huge step for us because she comes from a country that is very much tied to a third world drug war type. So marijuana, cannabis to her, there's no difference. You know, if I tell her something about hemp, she will not know the difference, but to, she just sees it and it's labeled as one thing. Um, one of the arguments recently was, you know, there's so much anxiety going on in the world, but the news never talks about um, marijuana or cannabis being good for you. And to me, that is, I think probably a lot of, a lot of people's mindset. Well, it's not there. And my doctor didn't prescribe it to me. You know, a lot of the older generations are very much about, well, that's not what my doctor gave me, or my doctor gave me this. And my doctor gave me that. Right. And so for me, I think it's important that the people who have opportunities to get in front of doctors or in front of the, um, hospitals and get an opportunity to, um, share a little bit of education, um, just sharing our experiences as one, as women, we are hormonally different different than men. Um, you know, there's a lot of research I think that still can be done. Um, but it also takes a lot of people to have to step up to do those research. So I know for, for me as a mom, they're probably still looking for other moms to do research on, to see how this affects their children and pregnancy. There's some out there still there's, you know, the one that lingers still around, um, or still about, in Jamaica, and that's almost 25 years ago. So I can imagine it's changed and there's still some out there, but it's still taboo and, it, and it's in different cultural um, levels. And I think it's going to come with conversations like this to where it's going to open their eyes to see how normal it is for people like you, who I imagine um, just by your last name, you are coming from a Hispanic background. I too, um, Filipino and Hispanic. Um, you know, my dad's Filipino. He's a lot lighter on it. He thinks it's it's a cool industry. He talks about his experience with it um, back in Guam. My mom, not so much. And so I, I see the difference there. And it just encourages me more to have open conversations like this and have people like you on. And so I, again, want to thank you again for one, being an example of somebody who may be consuming cannabis on a regular basis, but is very much ambitious and is a go-getter in life. You're not, it doesn't seem like you're a stone 
um, you know, the stoner typical couch locked type of person. Right. And so I think that makes a huge difference for people to see the light in cannabis, um, not to say to each their own, if that's something that you want to do on the weekends, it's cool, but it's right. not something that I do. I know that I use it, um, again, like a vitamin it's, it's a supplement. Right. It's, it really encourages me to keep going, um, days that I'm feeling moody. And for whatever reason that may be as a woman, um, you know, my, my child, my youngest child is only two just turned to. And so, um, having two back-to-back -back kids, that's a lot on a woman's body and just trying to balance that back out. I think cannabis has been a huge help as far as anxiety levels. And so I really wish doctors would be more open to that. I'm hoping to see that more, you know, seeing, um, some CBD, some hemp lines are already coming into where shelving, you know, you're seeing it in some of the doctor's offices, but, you know, having some one-to-ones on there, having more, um, familiar, familiarity with nanotechnology items. Um, I'm a huge fan of those just because um, I just think that for somebody who may be having a lot of pain, that waiting, you know, the four hours for an edible to kick in, that may not be ideal for their experience, or that's where people's bad experience comes in because they didn't wait. Um, so I'm more interested to know a little bit about um, your experience with boxer six, I know that is, I mean, you can tell us a little bit about where they're from a little bit of how you got into it. Um, right. and maybe some of the people that kind of nudged you into taking that route into formalizing yourself as a professional in the cannabis industry. Yeah. So, um, you know, you touched also on a lot of points that I think, um, resonate with our brand. For example, when you said, uh, that, not we're not cannabis users are not fitting that box of the pothead image and that's so true and i think it's that it's the fact that we're getting closer to federal legalization and that is bringing in more kind of curious consumers people that have never tried cannabis in the past and they're just like well you know what's what's the hype why are these people using it why are they saying it's helping them you know so they're curious and and um and I really feel that Boxer Six is understanding that and and you can see it through our marketing and brand imagery. Like we we're not using like a colorful cartoonish type of packaging. It's a very clean, classy uh packaging, something that you know you can put in your living room and leave it there and, and you it just looks okay, like it looks fine, beautiful. Yeah. And um and and we also thought about all the details and all the types of consumers that are in the market and um with the years and years of research and and testing we created the quick six nanotech formula and like you mentioned um it's um it's something that a lot of consumers were looking for because they didn't want to wait that long for pain relief or they just are busy and they want to know when it's going to hit instead of, you know, it's two hours and it's still not hitting. They think it's, it's gone and they go out and do something and it just boom, you know? So we really wanted to craft something that was um, helpful for consumers to tailor their experiences. And uh, we also have a lineup of, of six different SKUs with different ratios. Uh, so it's, there's something for everybody. And um, not only that, we're coming up with a nanotech uh, powder. So you can put it on your tea, put it in your coffee. So uh, that is, you know, that those are all the details and, and things that Boxer 6 is bringing to market. And, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to work for this company, because I felt that they were different mm -hmm. and um, that we're going to stand out, you know. Yeah. Sounds like you know a lot about it. I think it's important when you're representing a brand in the industry. Um, were you always in the cannabis industry as far as professionally? Has that always been your background? No. So uh, I started uh, my career in the, in the event space okay. and um, I was uh, coordinating events. Um, I was working events as a brand ambassador as well for okay. brands like Disney, Toyota um, and COVID hit all my events got canceled and I had already, you know, I was already interested in looking into cannabis um, and getting into the marketing side of it or helping be a voice 
and change the perspective of, you know, that image as well. So I'm like, I really want to do this. So I, I actually started in the black market, which I think a lot of us did, you know? Um, And I, um, I got a, I started uh, in production. I did that for a couple months and then um, then got moved into sales, quickly moved into a sales management role. And um, I was there for maybe a year and I'm like, okay, I, I really want to do this legally, you know? And I went into wild with wild and that was a great learning experience as well. And now I'm here, territory sales manager for Boxer Six. And and I have to thank a lot of people that did help me along the way. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when I was a wild, there's Kyle from he's an account manager there. He was he was a great mentor and he shared his knowledge with me. Um because he he's the type of person that wants everyone to succeed, you know, and uh, yeah, and and I I'm really lucky to have a lot of amazing have met a lot of amazing people that love to share their knowledge and like to see people grow in the industry. Yeah, I think it's important you surround yourself with people who are encouraging you to go a particular path, not to be you know intimidated because a lot of people will say it's male dominated. Um, but what industry isn't. So um, in my eyes, I just think that you got to, you know, think quick and you got to maneuver and add your flavor to it. And keeping organic content um, is going to be huge come 2023. I think people are getting to that point where um, statistically now you you don't have to be very fancy as far as what you're putting out. But if it's not organic, that's going to make a huge difference as far as where it's being um receptive as far as where your audience is at. Mm -hmm. So I think branding comes with a lot. It's um, not just the slapping of a logo on it. Like you said, you guys take a lot of time and effort to think about the colors, the flavors, everything that you guys are putting into the actual product. Um, So it is a craft. I do love everything about the cannabis industry from growing to seeing all the different products that has grown in the industry. You know, like you said, we come, I come from black market as well. Um, from growing to being a caretaker to experiencing, you know, being a salesperson as well. Um, just having an experience of what it's like to also be a, a patient, you know, at one point I got my card and was like, oh, this is dope. We're getting, we're moving on forward. You think it's like a whole driver's license. And then you realize, you know, there's still mom and pop shops. There's still, you know, particular counties that are not on board like mine. Um, I'm in San Bernardino County, just to be very clear with everybody that is got a lot of work that needs to be done here. And so um, if you are in San Bernardino County, I am asking for women to reach out. We, um, I think, would be a great voice for the councils to see, and especially people like Mariela and myself who are professionals and could really speak um, how much cannabis has been part of our lives and how much it's been more of a motivator than a, um, you know, something that's hindering us from Mm -hmm being motivating um, to others. And so, like you said, it is all about being of service and giving back to your community, whether it's being a woman um, or just being a human in in general on this earth. So um, I know you have a pretty large network of, I want to say probably men and women, but you would say men dominated for the reason that that's just how it's worked as far as the cannabis industry, right? Right. Correct. And yeah, and I'm trying to to change that I'm trying to find more women in cannabis and create some sort of support group for each other because we need that we need we need to be a voice for each other and help each other move up the ladder because that's that's what men do you know they help each other out so we need to create our own girl club in the cannabis industry and just pull each other up you know Yep. Men think differently. Um, Usually emotions are not involved. And so um, I think that's something that I've always taken away from them. I do have a lot of men that I find to be mentors from afar. And again, they're more motivational speakers. Um, but you know, people like Kobe, they, he's a great example of somebody who's very motivated, who had a very extreme work ethic, but was hated on a lot. Um, and he didn't give a fuck to be honest. Um, and I love that about him as I get older, that's the mentality that I have. And he's big about who he surrounded himself with. And I think that is the energy that I look for in people. And so I'm excited to meet you as another woman in the industry, who's equally as ambitious and ready to grow. Um, and then 
and just uh, working for a company like Boxer Six, who it seems that you guys are caring about what you guys are putting out. You're not, you know, just eager to slap a label on it and put it out there because I think that's happening a lot as well, because it's really easy to now white, white label or private label something because it's available. Um, but I think uh, soon enough, those will die out. And I think people who are taking the time to really, you know, curate and cater to their audience, which whatever audience that may be, I think that's going to be a huge deal. I think um, your background is going to be a huge up for you as well. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing where you go. Um, where can we find and learn more about you as Mariela, as a woman um, in the industry? And where can we support the brands that you are working for or have a mission with? Um, tell us more about maybe where we can find you on social media or on your website. Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn uh, dash I N dash Mariela Reyes. Uh, you can also email me at Mariela dot R at Boxer Six dot com. And you can find Boxer Six um, at Boxer Six dot com or on Instagram at Boxer Six Brands. Awesome. Um, and just for you guys who are wondering what I am smoking on, it is an Aero Brands Sports um, pen. They were at my Tifa event. I don't know if you do remember. I did. That. Yeah. Um, these are really cool because usually when you hit a vape, sometimes you're like hitting it at a certain level where you're like, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Is it hitting or not? And then you get slapped with this hit and you're like, oh shit, there it is. And you're choking for hours where this one vibrates as you're hitting it. So you can tell. And I think that's really, that's really nifty. So shout out to Aero Brands. Thank you again for sponsoring our women events last October. That is actually where we met. Um, this is how Mariela got to, um, know a little bit about Chief Entertainment. Uh, we are very thankful for you coming on today. We look forward to learning more about you and supporting you. Um, so if there is anything you guys want to find more about them, please make sure you guys reach out to Mariela on LinkedIn and make sure you guys follow Boxer Six on Instagram. Thank you again for coming on. Um, let us know how we can support you any other way. Make sure you guys, um, stay tuned for more people like this to come on board and is there any last few words that you want to end with i just want to say thank you for having me i really enjoyed our time and i'm i wish you a lot of success with your plans this 2020-23 and to our thank to your you. audience as well thank you thank you well you guys heard it that is mariela reyes again and more to come to you guys from rich soil podcast with chief entertainment